are you thinking of selling put options for weekly or monthly income? If so, you've come to the right place. Now, you may have seen my video, How to Sell Put Options to Generate Weekly or Monthly Income, that I published way back in 2021, and it got over 200,000 views. You can check it out up here. But there was a lot of stuff that I didn't mention. It was more of you know, a beginner's guide with cartoon examples. Um, if you want to check it out, feel free. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover the beginner as well as advanced strategies for selling put options that will supercharge your premiums with less risk. And if that's not enough, I'll even show you how to scan the market to find the best put options to sell, and how you can get started collecting income today. Now, before I get into it, I want you to know that I'm not an investment banker, financial advisor, accountant, or in any way licensed to provide financial or investment advice. I've been trading stocks and options for about 20 years, and my goal is to explain it in a way that by the end of this video, you'll have a solid foundation to generate weekly or monthly income by selling put options. Then you can discuss the method with your investment advisor and see if the plan is right for you. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Rick Orford, author of The Financially Independent Millennial. And if you like videos about investing, uh, making money, uh, or even retiring early, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. That way you'll never miss any of my future videos. All right, so let's dive right in and get started. Selling put options is a financial strategy that involves selling the right to sell specific underlying securities at a predetermined price within a specific time frame. Now, roughly 70% of institutional investors incorporate advanced put option selling strategies into their portfolios for enhanced performance. But first, if you're not entirely clear on the subject, it's essential to know what a put option is. A put option is a contract between a buyer and seller that specifies three things. The underlying security or the commodity, uh, the expiration date, as well as the strike price. Now, with a put option, the buyer or the holder gets the right but not the obligation to sell equity or a commodity to the option seller, that's you, within a specific time period and at a set price. Also, an equity put option means that it's controlling a hundred shares of either a stock or an ETF. So one contract is for a hundred shares, two contracts is for 200 shares, and so on. So why would anyone buy a put option? Well, people usually buy put options as insurance against the underlying equity or commodity going down in price. Say you own 100 shares of Google and you want to protect yourself from it going down in price. Well, you could buy a put option on Google, and in return, the put seller is paid a premium to assume the risk. In other words, the seller might be required to buy the underlying security at the strike price at any time until expiration, if the buyer exercises that right. When you sell a put option, your goal is for it to expire worthless. This way, you keep all the premium. The option expires worthless when the underlying security remains above the strike price at expiration. And then you can go on and sell another put option. Next, I'm going to cover some real-world examples of selling puts, as well as how to pick winning trades. It's important to remember that no matter what you decide to sell put options on, whatever the underlying security is, be sure you sell a put option on something you'd actually like to own. This is because at some point, if you sell enough put options, 
you'll probably be assigned. And if you are, don't worry, there's lots of things that you can do about it. Actually, you can check up this video up here, and I listed all of the strategies that I use if I feel if I'm about to get assigned or if I do get assigned. And by the way, I'll also explain some, explain some strategies that you can do later on in this video as well. All right, so typically, beginner investors start selling put options on stocks that they may have heard about in the news. Um, you know, like the famous ones, Meta, Google, Tesla, and, and so on. And hey, historically, the premiums on those stocks are great. But beginners, you know, they might just look at an options chain, maybe on Yahoo Finance, and go, wow, cool, um, you know, and sell the option and collect the premium without putting any other effort into it. It's kind of like doing it blind. Often, though, these beginners sell the options with strike prices that are way too close to the stock's price, and that means the option will be at a higher risk for assignment. Now, it's a strategy that new investors often start with, and then they get scared because after they sell their option, the stock might move below the strike price, and now they might get assigned, or the value of the options changes, and they just don't know what to do. Now, advanced traders, they do things completely differently. Research shows that by using specific technical indicators, you can improve timing accuracy in selling put options by 18%. And that's why when selling puts to generate income, I re recommend first looking at the options delta. Delta tells us the amount an options premium will move in relation to a $1 change in the underlying securities price. Now, for put options, the delta is always displayed as a negative number. Have a look at this options chain, which you can get for free on barchart.com. Here we can see the options chain for Tesla, which expires in a little over a month, and it includes the delta values. Notice these, minus 0.4, minus 0.5, minus 0.7. These all mean that if Tesla stock moves down $1, the premium will also move up $0.40, cents, $0.50, cents, $0.70, cents, etc. But here's a secret. The delta also tells us, more or less, the chances that the stock will expire out of the money, or worthless, which is exactly what you want. Just subtract 1 minus the delta and convert it to a percent to find out the chances of it expiring out of the money. See here, the $230 strike has a delta of minus 0.21. If we take 1 minus 0.21, we get a 78% chance that if you sold this option, it would expire worthless and you'd keep the premium. And at this very moment, you'd collect about $458 in contract premium income for selling this option. And if you sold 5 of these, you'd make $2,290 in 34 days if they expired worthless. Give me a like on this video if you think that's a good return in just over a month. So to sell your put option, you'll issue a sell to open order in your brokerage account, select put as the options type, um, the ticker, the strike, as well as the expiration date. And by the way, I highly recommend setting a limit price when selling options, as this is the lowest amount you'll get if and when the option is filled. Now, am I suggesting that you sell put options on Tesla specifically? No. I mean, if you're comfortable potentially owning uh, Tesla at the strike price, uh, if you were assigned, then, then fine. I mean, I own Tesla in my own portfolio, and I got it at a very good price. But I'd have to ask myself if I wanted to buy more. So this would play into my strategy.
Now, if you're not sure which underlying security to go with or to sell options on, consider selling puts on an index ETF like the SPY uh, that tracks the S&P 500. It's one of the most traded S&P 500 e index ETFs that's out there. Next up, I'm going to cover how you can supercharge your premiums and get four to five times the premium without selling multiple contracts. In the last example, I showed you how you could sell a $230 Tesla put expiring in a little over a month for $4.58 a share or $458 per contract that expires in 34 days. But what if I told you that you could get four or five times the premium for the same underlying security and strike price with less risk? Well, thanks to time being on your side, you'd get a higher premium with a longer dated option. Now, before I get into that, I want you to start thinking like a professional trader. A professional trader will think in terms of risks and return. Now, to calculate the return, you're going to divide the premium by your capital at risk, which is your strike price. So, in this case, it's $4.58 divided by $230, and that's just under 2%. Now, 2% in 34 days works out to 21.4% annualized. To get this return though, you'd have to sell 12 options once a month and get it right each and every time, and that's hard to do. But what if we increase the duration a little bit? Well, say we take this Tesla option here, which expires in 279 days. You can see that premiums are so much higher, and the $230 strike put pays a whopping $27.17 a share, or $2,717 for just one contract. Now, that works out to an 11.8% return, or 15.5% annualized. Now, why would you want to sell a longer dated put option? Well, time in the market gives you more time to profit. So, if the stock starts to move lower, you have potentially more time for it to move up. Also, as the expiration gets nearer and nearer, well, we'll have something that's called theta decay. And that means the premium will go down. And that means that you can potentially buy your put option back to close out the trade. To do that, you'd issue what we call a buy to close order with the brokerage using the very same underlying security, strike price, as well as expiration date. And doing so will eat into your profits, but it also crystallizes the remainder. So what do you need to sell put options? Well, Remember, when you're selling a put option, you're giving a buyer a right but not an obligation to sell you the underlying commodity or security. In other words, you may need to buy the underlying commodity or the stock or the ETF at the strike price at any time up until expiration. And to do that, you're going to need enough collateral. Collateral will be in the form of cash or margin in your brokerage account. And your brokerage account will have to support options as well as selling naked puts. So, if you sell a put option on a stock with a strike price of $100, you're going to need 100 times $100 uh, in available margin in your account to sell the option. And if you want to sell two put options, well, you're going to need twice the money. So you're going to need to keep that in mind if you're going to be going ahead with this, with this particular strategy. Next up, we're going to talk about how much money you can make by selling put options. When it comes to selling puts, your goal is for the option to expire worthless so you keep all the premium. And traders can earn anywhere between 1 and 5% 
or more a month selling daily, weekly, or monthly put options. It all depends on your trading strategy. Actually, studies indicate that using advanced strategies can increase the success rate of selling put options by over 21%. So, there's that. Remember, the premium received from selling put options can be kept as profit as long as the stock price remains above the strike price or is used to offset potential losses if the stock price declines below the strike price. How much you earn depends on how volatile the stock market currently is, the strike price, as well as the expiration date. For example, between 2009 and 2020, selling puts on the SPY was a very popular strategy as markets largely went up, which is what put sellers want, right? But after 11 years of the bull market, we had the pandemic, then inflation, and interest rates, and all of this caused a ton of volatility. But now, at the time of this recording, markets appear to be recovering as interest rates and inflation have stabilized. Actually, the markets are already talking about reductions in interest rates and barring any geopolitical catastrophe, financial crisis, or something of the like, we could be on the cusp of another bull market, and that means selling puts could be a very lucrative trade once again. But regardless, the more risk you're willing to take, the more income you can collect. In other words, the more unstable the markets are, the greater income potential, but the greater risk to you. Now, there was a time that I preferred to sell slightly out of the money options with an expiration of about three to six weeks out. And that was pre-pandemic. Let's call it the golden years. These days, I'll consider longer dated options with at least a 70 to 75% chance or more of expiring worthless. And doing so gives me lots of time for markets to potentially recover if something bad happens. In the next chapter, I'm going to discuss how I can scan the market for these type of options using an option scanner. Did you know that more than 80% of experienced traders use advanced techniques when selling put options? And screening for options trades is definitely an advanced strategy, but it doesn't have to be. Now, my favorite screener is called Option Samurai, and I left a link in the description below for you to take a look and give it a try for free. Um, it has both beginner features as well as advanced features, um, you know, so that it offers a starting point for pretty much anyone to appreciate. So here's how it works. I'll begin by scanning for a naked put, which is the trade, what we, which is the trade that we want. And then I'll select an expiration date at least a few months out, a probability of expiring worthless, and the annualized return. Then I hit Run Scan, and the results are displayed from best to worst according to the scanner. But you can sort the list any way that you like. So I'll take the first trade suggestion, and it's for NVIDIA, and they're suggesting selling the $420 strike put that expires in 125 days for a $15 premium, or $1,500 per contract. The probability of expiring worthless is 77.95%, and the annualized return is 10.79%. Of course, you don't need to sell a put on NVIDIA alone. You can sift through all of the results and pick the one that you like best. Just pay, pay attention to the probabilities as well as the returns. Now, you might be wondering about the risks of selling put options. Implementing advanced risk management approaches can reduce potential losses by 35% when selling put options. 
Now, to sell puts successfully, it requires an understanding of market conditions, technical analysis, as well as risk management. Actually, in my view, the risks in selling out-of-the-money put options are actually less than they would be if you owned the stock today. Can you believe it? Well, here's why. Let's take, for example, Apple. Apple is a stock that I own. I love the stock. I've had it for a long time. Now, at the time of the recording, the stock trades for $197.57. Now, if you sold a $150 strike put option and collected $3, the risk for you starts only when Apple moves below $147. That's the break-even point. But if you own 100 shares of Apple today and it goes down to $150, you're going to have a paper loss of $4,457. But if you sold a $150 put option, you'd have a profit still of $300. Paper losses only start when the stock moves below the break-even price, and in this case it's $147 if you were assigned. Remember that by selling put options, you agree to buy the underlying equity should the put option holder wish at any point until expiration. And the risk in selling puts is that you might, not, you might end up being forced to buy something that's worth much less than you paid. And don't forget, when you sell options, you collect a premium, and that can help offset any losses if they happen. So to manage the risk, you need to be sure that whatever you're selling a put option on, that it's a quality stock or ETF or underlying security that you'd be happy to own at the agreed strike price. And once you own it, you can do whatever you like with it. Writing put options allows you to collect a premium at the start of your trade, and that represents your maximum profit. And remember, you want to keep that profit. If you're running into a situation, let's say for example, where the option is you know, getting near the money, it's at the money, um, or it's in the money, well, you're going to risk assignment. And for that reason, it's important to watch the trade and make an informed decision as to what you're going to do next. And that might mean adjusting your trade by rolling the position to a different strike price and expiration. Rolling or adjusting the position means buying back the option that you sold by issuing a buy to close order. In your, in your brokerage, you'll select the put option along with the ticker, expiration, and strike price. At this point, the option is going to be more expensive than when you sold it. In other words, it's going to cost you more to buy it back than what you received for it when you sold it initially. And that's okay. Once you bought back the option, you can then sell another one. And the premium received from that one will offset at least partially, but maybe even more, any of the losses on closing the option. Now, some folks call this an advanced strategy. I call it a wheel strategy. And it can be an effective way to fix a broken trade or a trade that's going offside. Next, we're going to talk about what happens if you get assigned. Now, first, I want to preface this with the fact that only about 7% of all options trades ever get assigned. And this is because most trades are closed out before expiration. But let's say, for example, you get caught off guard and you do get assigned. Well, if you followed this video, you'd be a proud owner of 100 shares times the number of contracts sold for a stock or ETF that you were happy to own. And guess what? You got it at a discount. Actually, experienced traders often use this as an advanced strategy to not only generate income, but also acquire stocks at lower prices. It's kind of like a a price line way of setting your price to get a stock.
Now, if you're assigned, the underlying is probably going to be worth less than you paid, and that's okay. You can either sit tight and wait for it to go back up in price, you could collect dividends on the stock if they happen to pay for it, or you could sell covered calls on it. Be careful. Like put options, if you sell covered calls, you'll now be at risk of assignment. And with a covered call, the risk is that your stocks could get called away. So, if you're going to be selling covered calls, be sure to know the chances as well as be comfortable with the fact that those stocks might be called away at the strike price. And if you want to know more about selling covered calls, check this video up here. All right, so if this was your first time thinking about selling put options, I know that you might still have some questions, you might be confused. I know I was when I first started selling puts. I think the most important takeaway is that you have to have a clear understanding of the risks involved, including the potential obligation to buy the underlying stock at the predetermined price before engaging in selling put options. And of course, if you've still got questions, go ahead and watch this video another time and don't hesitate to leave a message in the comments below because I love reading them and of course answering back. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.